What's the word, y'all? Hey, listen, I woke up this morning. I'm getting ready to go to the podcast. I'm brushing my teeth. I get a notification from Shams that say the Pelicans are talking to the Trailblazers about CJ McCollum. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. That's great. That's about to be the biggest trade of the day. I was wrong out of nowhere. Well, okay, maybe not out of nowhere. But the Kings and the Pacers agree on a deal with Sabonis being the main piece from the Pacers going to the Kings and Tyrese Halliburton being the main piece from the Kings going to the Pacers. And I cannot believe that trade happened. Just a week or so ago, the Kings were telling the world, stop calling our phone about Tyrese Halliburton because we're not trading him. He is one of the untouchable pieces in the organization. And just like that, they folded. They folded. And, and it's crazy because Tyrese Halliburton felt like a building block for me as an outsider looking in. Um, but we knew this, right? I said this very early on in the season where they were going to have to make a decision between De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton. Um, and you know what? One, one bit of credit that I will give the Kings because it's not going to be a lot of credit given to them in this video is that they didn't take too long to make the decision, but they might have made the wrong decision. We will, only time will tell, right? Only time will tell who end up being a better player between De'Aaron Fox, who might not be having a good season this year, but last year Boyd was averaging 25, or who would be better between him and Tyrese Halliburton. But we had an idea that they were going to do this, and it feels like more often than not, franchises wait too long to make that decision. We just saw that with CJ and Damian Lillard. So they made the decision a year and a half of them being together, but they made a decision. And it is just a bit weird. A, a week ago, literally a week ago, um, in a post-game interview, Tyrese Halliburton, you know, during this loser streak they were they were on at the moment, they're like, we don't really, he said, we don't really care about the history of this team. They ain't been in the playoffs in X amount of years. They're one of the laughing stocks of the league. I am here. We are here trying to change that. He was trying to be a positive impact in the front, in the, in the locker room, change the narrative about the Kings, and they said, you know what? We don't want you here anymore. And I've seen some people try to speculate be, um, the reason they dealt Tyrese over De'Aaron is because they just gave De'Aaron Fox his big old contract, or um, they drafted Davion Mitchell, and they're trying to save face on that regardless. Tyrese Halliburton felt like a piece that should have been untouchable. What is the ceiling of Tyrese Halliburton? Only time will tell. But I think bro is really good. Now, everything I said in this video is just me as Kenny Beecham. I haven't talked to Reese in a couple months. Actually, I texted him after the trade. He ain't got back to me because I'm just assuming his phone is blowing up. He got to think about moving and all of that stuff. So I ain't worried about it. But everything I said in this video is just my opinion. I, I, ain't, I ain't talked to bro in a minute. I want to bring up Wolves because I want to give you the exact details because it was just more of a one for one as you could probably um, probably tell. It was the Monta Sabonis, Jeremy Lamb, and Justin Holiday for Tyrese, Buddy Heald, and Tristan Thompson. Uh, we knew that the Kings were trying to make some deal because, well, this team was being very, very bad. They were on a crazy loser streak, and they just couldn't get things right. And it just felt like the guys didn't love playing together. They didn't really have an identity. And they get the best player in this trade. You know what I'm saying? As of right now in 2022, DeMontis Sabonis is a better player. This is a guy that is in all-star conversations all the time. He's a two-time all-star. He was in conversations this year. He's a guy that's going to put up 22 points, 10, 12 rebounds, and some assists a game. He is the best player in this trade. And that might be the thinking that the Kings have. Hey, we're, we're trying to make a push for the play-in. Um, the Pelicans just, just made a trade for CJ, and now they about to get up there. And now the Trailblazers are going to go down. We need to go ahead and make our move, too. But man, this just feels wrong. This could this could be a trade that they look back on in a few seasons because DeMont Sabonis is this year and next year on his contract. Um, and I think that he said before that if he were to pick where he wanted to play, he'd want to play in California because his wife is from the LA area. So he's he's in California. So that's a that's a W. But it's it's the Kings, right? And I, I'm tired of hearing fans and people start talking about these um these less prominent, these smaller market teams talking about cap flexibility, cap space. You're going to see that when we talk about the Portland Trailblazers. People aren't signing to the Kings. Don't talk to me about how much money they freed up in this year. And when has they ever, like, legitimately signed someone that wasn't already on their roster and got an extension? It doesn't happen. Yes, these teams are at a disadvantage to building their organizations because they're not L.A. or anything like that. But stop talking to me about the Trailblazers having $60 million of cap or the Kings having this amount of money in cap in two years. That shit is irrelevant to me, honestly. Because you're probably not going to use that to get a superstar player to add to this team. I don't know what the spacing looks like on this on the Kings team with De'Aaron Fox being a negative uh, shooter. DeMontis Sabonis don't really shoot the ball like that. They traded away Buddy Hield, who's one of the greatest three-point shooters in the league. I understand that he had to get free up because obviously things were working. But the, it's just the, let me let me just take a look at the entire depth chart real, real real quick. So according to ESPN, they're looking at De'Aaron Fox, 
Davion Mitchell slash Justin Holley or Jeremy Lamb. Both of those dudes are out, I guess. Harrison Barnes, Matsa Bonus, and Rashad Holmes. And I was just in the spaces with Kings fans that were basically saying that they don't really know if Harrison Barnes is going to get traded now or Rashad Holmes get traded now because this is a win now move for them, right? They Again, they got the best player in this trade. They got an all-star caliber player in this trade. This don't seem like a team that just a couple weeks ago was saying like, oh, they we might be able, or other teams around the league, like we might be able to get Harrison Barnes for a bargain because they suck. I feel like they might make a decision to keep Harrison Barnes on the team now because he's actually a good player to add. DeMontis Sabonis is, is a great pick and roll player. De'Aaron Fox is not. Tyrese is a great pick and roll player. So it just I just feel like the fit would have been better with Reese and Sabonis rather than De'Aaron and Sabonis, especially since uh, just just the lack of uh, lack of shooting on the wings or lack of shooting in the organization at all right now, other than I guess Justin Holiday's now the best shooter on the roster. It's just a bit weird. Um, Kings going King, they, they might push to a 10 seed, which is probably, they going to be in the front office high-fiving each other if that's the case. When in reality, you don't ever want your ceiling of your team to be the 10 seed. And that's kind of why you, a lot of teams hold on to those younger pieces because we don't know what Tyrese might be in three seasons and he might be able to help you be more than just a 10 seed. I don't know if this is the best version of DeMont Sabonis because people forget that DeMont Sabonis is still a young player too. I think he's only 25, 26 years old, but it feels like the, the monster bonus you get, which is all-star caliber, this is just who he's going to be for his career, which is good. Oh, man. It's just it's just very weird for the Kings. I feel like the, this is a team that's going to push themselves into the ninth slash 10th seed, and they're going to be in the front office half-fiving each other. We did it, boys. When in reality, I don't I don't think you really did. You know, the monster bonus is a very, very, very good player, do not get me wrong. But he's raising your ceiling, ceiling marginally. You know what I'm saying? If, you're, if you want to be a team that's in the play-in, Great trade for you. But if you want to get your fans more than that down the line, it's this this trade doesn't really do that when a, a, an opportunity to maybe develop Tyrese could have done that. I don't know, though. Pacers, though. Oh, the Pacers. Listen, listen here, Pacers. I'm, I'm excited about this trade, okay? I'm super excited about this trade. This is the second trade that you've done this this uh, trade in line that I have been a fan of. I like the Karis Avert trade for y'all. And now I like this because you can build okay teams with youth. You can you're going to have Chris Dorte, who's like 36 years old, as a rookie. That's fine. That's okay. You're going to have Tyrese. And they just said that they believe that the future of Miles Turner is in Indiana, which is great. You finally get to see what you have in Miles Turner deeper than him just being a stretch five. He's wanted more, but he hasn't had the opportunity because he had to narrow his game down so Sabonis can flourish. And they love each other. They're like homies, but he had to narrow his game down. We'll see at the age of 25. I think he's also 25, too. Um, how much he can progress as a player. You're not going to be good this season. So you're going to have a top-end pick. I like this trade for them a lot. This is like one of those, this is the trade that they wanted, right? How can we take a step back, but also still be competitive? We don't want to be OKC, no disrespect. We don't want to be the Houston Rockets. We don't want to be this team. We want to be a team that is rebuilding slash retooling, but still get a nice little pick, but still be competitive. The lineup of this team don't look terrible. Yeah, bro. After this trade, things are interesting. So Malcolm Brogdon, I forgot. I ain't seen Malcolm Brogdon hoop in a minute. So you got Malcolm Brogdon, Tyrese Halliburton, who are, who are funny because I remember coming out of the draft, a lot of people compared him to Malcolm Brogdon. Now they playing together. Okay, maybe get mentored a little bit there. They got Buddy Hield at the three, Torrey Craig at the four, and 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 Miles Turner. Miles Turner's not here. Did bro get traded and, and, and I ain't got my noties on? He did it, but as you can see, Miles Turner's not here. I had to Google bro name because I was like, wait, did I miss something? Either way, the team doesn't look terrible. You gotta have Chris Dorte coming off the bench, who will probably be starting for now because Malcolm Brogdon is out. Um, you still got Lance Stevenson. This is not a this is not a good team by any measure, but it's not a bad team either. This is a team that if I was an Indiana Pacer fan, I would pay the one dollar to go watch. Especially if Isaiah Jackson go come back. You know, Isaiah Jackson, Tyrese Halliburton, pick a roll. I'm here for this. This is a good trade for this organization. It's a good trade for this organization, bro. After all of that, me begging them to hit the reset button, they kind of did but didn't. And got one of the better young pieces in the league. If you ask somebody, look at any of the articles, best 24 players on the 24. Tyrese is high on those lists, man. I think a lot of people understand the, how Tyrese plays and how he can be a floor general and how he, with the janky looking shock, can still hit a lot of the things and how when a pick and roll comes to play, Tyrese does that. Him and Rashawn Holmes, him and Chemezi Metsu, that was it. And now... They don't got no crazy vertical lob threats. But in due time, who knows? They might draft, I don't know, prospect. Jabari Smith, can he jump? He probably can jump. Maybe not, though. On the surface, if I were to be great in this trade for the Indiana Pacers, I would give it a B+. And for the Kings, I would give it a D. A D. 
because you might make the play in. And that's decent. D for decent. But before we transition to the next trade, we got to go to basketball. Hell, the Kings. Let's see what the fans are saying. What other moves do the front office need to make in order to justify trading Halliburton? Very good question. I don't know if there's a lot you can do to justify making that trade. We definitely need some three-point shooting and probably need to move Holmes as well, IDK. Yeah, because Rashawn Holmes... And DeMontis Sabonis probably doesn't work well. So you know what? Send Rashawn to Chicago. We got, um, um, uh, I really got nothing. I think that if Tyrese becomes what we think he can become, it's like the Warriors gave up Curry instead of Monte. For y'all that, y'all that, y'all that don't know this, <clears throat> sorry, for y'all that don't know this, um, the Milwaukee Bucks and the Warriors were in conversations to make a trade. The Warriors tried to trade the Milwaukee Bucks, Steph Curry, but Milwaukee was like, we'd rather have Monte. Milwaukee saved. <laughs> saved that organization. Um, and that that's not a good parallel. I mean, that's not a terrible uh, parallel. Again, you'd have to see Tyrese turn into Steph Curry, which is unlikely considering Steph Curry is one of the greatest of all time. You know, just by the odds, Tyrese probably won't end up being some, one of the greatest of all time. You know what? The, the subreddit ain't as bad. Okay, so on Reddit, I saw, I mean, on Twitter, I saw something saying that the subreddit was going crazy. But I think that these people have went through their stages of grief. They had the denial. Oh, I hate this team, yada, yada, yada. But a lot of this stuff is like, hey, y'all don't really understand how good Sabonis is. And, and I don't think there's a person in the world that will tell you that Sabonis is not a good pickup. It's just about what you gave up to get Sabonis. Um, Sabonis is a hooper. I love this trade. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's very interesting. Very interesting. And you don't look terrible in that jersey. All right, let's talk about the second trade, and that is CJ McCollum getting traded to the Pelicans. I don't know why this trade broke seven different times. Like, they told us, okay, they're in conversations, and then they said, oh, it's a deal has been created. Oh, now it's this for that conversation. It took them, like, seven different trades to tell us the full package, but I finally got it, okay? Well, first, let me... Oh, okay, full trade. Uh, the Blazers get Josh Hart, Tomas Adarancy, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Didi and a protected 2022 pick. Two second rounders, CJ, Larry Nance, and Tony Snell are going to the Pacers. And this is the second time this trade deadline where I'm looking at the Blazers like, what is going on again? They tried to face this as, hey, we're going to have $60 million in cap space. When in reality, if you look at the 2023 uh, free agency class, it's James Harden, okay? It's Kyrie Irving. Okay, it's Russell Westbrook on a player option low key. He's gonna take that uh, 44 million. It's Zach Levine. It's DeAndre Aiden. It's Miles Bridges. With that 40 million dollars, you think you're gonna go out there and get Dame a second star, like a real second star, not a CJ who's been really good. People forget that just last year, CJ was averaging 26 before he got injured. CJ's really, really good. He just didn't fit alongside Dame for the long time. Do you really think that you're convincing your fans that that 60 million dollars in cap space is enough for them to root for? I do not think so. So what I think might happen is that you're going to get to the offseason, you're going to strike out on a lot of stuff that's going to make Dame happy, and then this is the last straw. This is the whatever it is to break the camel's back. Whatever the saying goes. Dame, if this offseason does not go perfectly for y'all, which it probably don't, nobody's blaming you, dog. Nobody's blaming you. And the Trailblazers organization, nobody is blaming you if you trade them away. They traded C.J. McCollum, for Nikhil Alexander-Walker, who has shown flashes. Nikhil Alexander-Walker can hoop, but it's just like, can he put it together full time? Josh Hart, who's younger but older. You know what I'm saying? He's younger but older. And then they got a first-round pick that's protected so weirdly that it's like, you might not get that pick, dog. You know what I'm saying? The Blaze, you might not get that pick this season. Only way you get it is if, if it's between 5 and 14, and the way things are going, the Pelicans will probably be a better team this season than, than what they're looking at right now. So you might not get that pick to convey this year. But Kenny... We just added one more first-round pick. That's always a W. Uh, uh, we got young assets, and you never know when a disgruntled star is going to be out there. You're absolutely right. You don't know that. But that's just so much ifs to be building your organization around. Listen, I think majority of NBA fans came to the realization last year or even a year before that that the Dame CJ backcourt had run its course. You got to the conference finals. It was a great run, but it had run its course. I don't know why it took that organization so long. Before the season started, people were mocking up CJ for Ben Simmons trades, and you had to settle for Josh Hart and Q. Alexander Walker in a heavily protected first rounder. Not ideal. And the thing that confuses me the most, 
they don't have a general manager right now. Will they put up Joe Cronin and tell him this offseason you get the job full term? I don't know. They have an interim dude making the biggest trades in their organization's history. An interim dude. Now imagine, he he trade everything. Yusuf Nurkic is gone next, and, and Dame is still there. We got all his caps. You telling me this offseason you're going to hire a dude to clean up the mistakes? And now they're going to be blaming him if he don't get a... Man, stop it. Joe Cronin should be your full-time guy because he made two huge trades for your organization. These are bad. Objectively. These are bad. If Nikhil Alexander-Walker can turn into something, if Keon Johns can turn into something, then we'll look back on this in three seasons. But as right now, this is bad. And now they got a million guards. <laughs> a million of them. Anthony Simon, Eric Bledsoe, uh, Dennis Smith Jr., Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Tomas Sadoransky, Ben McLemore, CJ LB, KJ, uh, 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 Keon Johnson. Those are eight guards, and some of them can run like shooting guard wing positions, but that's eight guards, and you don't have any bigs other than Yusuf Nurkic who might get traded anyway. I don't love this trade for them. I don't. The, the bright thing is that, hey, CJ is good enough to win you games occasionally, and now he's gone, so you can really bottom out and go for that top five pick or whatever it is. Um, and if that's the case and you get a Jabari Smith or you get a Chet Holmgren, then you can look back on this trade and say it was worth it because we got a top three pick. But again, everything has to go in your favor. You got a 14% chance of getting number one pick if you're the worst team. Odds are a little bit different than they were four or five years ago. For the Pelicans, I like it a lot. I think CJ McCollum is definitely more of a three option on a good team than a two option, right? He's going to be behind Zion eventually when Zion comes back. He's going to be behind Brandon Ingram because Brandon Ingram is a bucket. And now you got CJ McCollum, which is great. The only thing I worry about is, is this team is the 27th ranked defense in the entire league. CJ doesn't help that. <laughs> CJ doesn't help that. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a dog fight. They're gonna be scoring and scoring and scoring and scoring and hope that we hit the last shot at the end of the game. But if you're you're asking a team that that basically gave up a young player, Nikhil Alexander Walker, who was one of the odds on favors to win six, uh, uh, most improved player, and he ain't done none of that, and a lottery heavily lottery protected first round pick, I would do this trade nine times out of ten. You know what I'm saying? Only thing that scares me a little bit is that CJ this season hasn't been great. And he's already a 31-year-old guy who's got a couple years left on his contract. But it's a chance you got to take. This team still has a ton of draft capital. The Lakers trade, the Drew Holiday trade, they got a ton of picks, y'all. They got a ton of picks. Got young players. Herb Jones is going to have to defend everything. Uh, Brandon Ingram plays some defense. But the, the, the inclusion of Larry Nance came out of nowhere. This trade went from one that's like, oh, I, I messed with it for the Pelicans, to now add a Larry Nance. I'm like, yo. This is a really good trade. And Jackson Hayes has been hooping his butt off recently. Maybe they got something in him. Maybe he's more than just a dude that's in and out of the G League. I'm excited. The trade deadline is always a good time for me because I always love watching basketball, but I get kind of get kind of tired of watching the same teams. And now with all of these movements, it's like, oh, snap, this is basically a new Pelicans team. This is a new Trailblazers team. That's a new Indiana team. That's a new Kings team. So, I, I mean, if I'm grading this one for the Pelicans, I'd probably give it like a B, B plus. And for the Blazers, maybe a C minus, maybe a D plus, something like that. Let me know in the comment section what y'all think about all these trades. Y'all know these are just rambles more than anything. I may have misspoke a million times, but whatever.